As you know, the former federal Liberal leader, former foreign minister and former Australian ambassador to the US, Andrew Peacock, died last week in the United States. He was a charismatic and debonair man whose leadership rivalry with John Howard set the tone on the conservative side of politics for a decade or more. Who could ever forget the phone call in 1987 between Peacock and his close friend, then Victorian opposition leader, Jeff Kennett, was intercepted and recorded by a bloke with a scanner and it created a media and political sensation. Let's listen to a bit of it now. This is Jeff Kennett relaying to Peacock his own phone conversation with John Howard. I got off the phone and said, you happy with the result? And I said, no, I'm not. He said, why? And I said, because without your front pages of total disease, you have had 10 that week. I could have got myself another four and you f***ed it up for me. And he went off his brain. Oh, did he? And he went off his brain for a long time. He went off his brain. I said, he went off his brain. And I, I said to him, he said, I didn't like the way you kept me out of the campaign. I said, I wouldn't have you in it. And I didn't have any federal people in it. You didn't have me. You didn't have anyone. And I said to him, tomorrow I'm going to bucket the whole lot of you. No, don't do that, Jeffrey. What a stir it caused at the time. So many of you will remember it. Peacock had to resign his front bench position. It will forever remain a piece of national political folklore. I caught up with the former Victorian Premier Jeff Kennett just a short time ago to discuss the passing of his dear friend Andrew Peacock. Jeff Kennett, thanks for joining us again. Let's talk politics before we talk about the personal side of your relationship with Andrew Peacock. Was Andrew Peacock, uh, perhaps alongside another Victorian in Peter Costello, one of the finest Liberal figures ever not to become Prime Minister? Yes, I think that's uh, a pretty good, uh, accurate description, Chris. Uh, as you know, he was referred to as the cult from Keong or of Keong, but he never crossed the line first. And in one sense, it's understandable if you knew Andrew well enough. Andrew was, to me, a consummate diplomat. And even when in politics, whether it was as uh, Minister for the Army, External Affairs or Foreign Affairs, he was very polite, very well educated. He built very good relationships with people. I'm never sure that he had the killer instinct that a lot of politicians need to get over the line first. So uh, I think you're absolutely right. He and Peter both missed out on the top job. Different personalities, different times, of course. But Andrew, as I, as I said, more than anything else, he was a consummate diplomat, whether in politics or out of it. He, of course, was up against one of the greatest Labor leaders of all time in Bob Hawke. What were his weaknesses? I suppose you've answered that to a degree. If there was a political weakness, it might have been that lack of a killer instinct. Yes, I think that's correct. And also, while Bob was very, very effective and was very charismatic, Andrew was equally as charismatic. But I'll never forget when I was with him in the... Uh, rooms as the votes were being counted. I think it was the 90 election. And I, it looked as though we were going to miss out. And I said to him, oh, look, I'm sorry, etc." He said, I'm not sure I ever wanted the job. Now, he might have just said that given the way the tide was running. But I think that reinforced in my mind then that, yes, he'd fought to become leader of the party a couple of times. And yes, he'd led them into a couple of elections. But it wasn't the be-all and end-all in his life. As I said, he didn't have that political killer instinct that I've seen in so many other people who have made it to the top. Yeah, and he turned his, uh, his strength in relationships and his uh, strength in diplomacy to the nation's benefit post-politics, of course, as an ambassador in Washington and then in commercial roles. Tell us about your friendship with him and about the man post-politics. Well, I went, I go back to him into the uh, early 70s and uh, we lived very close together initially until he moved into uh, East Melbourne. Uh, so we of often used to drop in at his place and have drinks and talk, etc, etc. Uh, and we shared a lot of our ups and downs, Chris. In politics, because you do go up and down, you need to have people that you can talk to in confidence. And Andrew and I had a very, very good relationship in terms of expressing freely to each other our own fears, our failings, our strengths and weaknesses, etc. So it was a great friendship. When he got out in 94, I think it was, I was then Premier, and he very quickly was appointed 
ambassador to the United States by John Howard and served there exceedingly well and came back here to live after that period of time uh, again for a period of time before with his now wife Penne moving back to the United States. I saw him less obviously he used to come to Australia two or three times a year uh, we'd catch up but it wasn't the same relationship that is built when people are living close to each other. You talk about mates sharing your intimate thoughts about politics. I revisited today that infamous phone call that was uh, eavesdropped <laughs> upon between you and Andrew, where you shared some frank thoughts about uh, John Howard. I mean, it was a massive story at the time, but I bet you had a few laughs about it in the years afterwards. Yes, and uh, a few laughs, laughs and gasps at the time, can I say, because I remember Andrew saying to me, for goodness sake, he said I was sound asleep in my own bed with my own wife and I lose my job and you've kept yours. Uh, <laughs> and they're just one of those moments in time. Uh, and as you say, the recording was done illegally and published. They changed the laws after that, you might remember. Uh, but when I think of Andrew, it brings a smile to my face. I'm sorry he's gone at such a reasonably young age, but I know he hasn't been well for the last couple of years and I wouldn't have liked him to have suffered. But it didn't matter whether it was in politics or for the Liberal Party or as an ambassador or his love of racing, his love of his three girls. I always have very, very fond memories of him. And I, you know, I just feel fortunate that he and I experienced probably three decades together, uh, which were important to both of us. Yeah, I'm really glad that you're able to share that with us, Jeff. I only met him a couple of times, but charm and charisma were, were at the forefront the, the, on the occasions that I met him. I wonder if I could just move on and get your thoughts on some contemporary issues, Jeff. And uh, we're hearing now that even if everyone in Australia who needs and wants to be vaccinated is vaccinated, that there'll still be reticence to open our international borders. Are we overdoing it already? Well, I think we're starting to, Chris, and it's happening with New Zealand, and we're now seeing a flood of people both ways. So the public want it, the public need to travel. I think we've got to be very cautious, though, that we don't open them too quickly. You have a look around the world at the moment, whether it's Canada or India, the escalation in the number of new cases every day is very, very high. So we are an island. Being an island for us in New Zealand has helped us considerably through COVID. And it would be very silly to put that at risk, I think, too early. So I'd be guided by medical opinion. I'd be guided by those politicians who clearly have more information than I do. I personally am not in a hurry to get in the plane to travel overseas except to Tasmania. Uh, next weekend when I'll be playing your team uh, down there at Launceston. Yeah, let's hope uh, it's a bit of turbulence on that flight for the Hawthorne team, Jeff. Just before <laughs> I let you go, um, are you still uh, putting your hat into the ring for the presidency of the Victorian Liberal Party? I've been having discussions, Chris, over the last few weeks on that matter. They've all been conducted very amicably and very politely. I'll come to a landing position on that sooner than later, both in the interests of the party and also uh, in my interests in terms of knowing what the future holds. So it won't be too long, but we are getting there. Get back into it, Jeff. The country needs you, not to, not to mention the state of Victoria. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Have a great day. He could be back, eh? Obviously not in Parliament, but as the President of the Victorian Liberal Party, we will wait and see. Always a pleasure to catch up with Jeff Kennett, even when he's promoting a Hawthorne victory over the Crows. Come on, the Crows. We'll get him down there in Tasmania.